no vision. He had to face politicians, many from outside of the South, with little backbone. And finally, he had to face a terrorist with no conscience. And in Memphis, Tennessee, the night before he met that, his fate, he gave a talk that has resonated with me since, and many of you, I'm sure. And he concluded that talk by saying that I've been to the mountaintop, and I've seen the promised land. He said, I might not get there with you, but it's a land of fairness and promise and justice. I think we know what Dr. King had reference to. He was a minister, and he had reference to that story, that story about the Jews who also had been held as slaves in Egypt, who had been released and had wandered from place to place, receiving awful treatment, and finally, and finally they got to the River Jordan. And that little band of ex-slaves stood on that river and they looked across. And they were so joyed because it was the promised land that they had been told that they would receive. And as they stood there preparing to cross, several in the group said, you know, I don't think, I don't think we really ought to go over there. Because those people over there, they're different than we are. They've got different ways, and I just don't think we should go. And others in the group said, yeah, you know, why don't we go back to Egypt? At least we have a job there. We, 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 we could be secure there. We wasn't going to get harmed or anything. Well, as you know the story, they didn't cross that river then. They quarreled among themselves and finally wandered for 40 more years in the wilderness. Well, it's about 40 years since the Reverend Dr. King left us. And since that fatal day in 1968, America has also wandered in the wilderness. Dr. King and Rosa Parks and so many more led us up to that promised land of equality in this nation. But we were very slow to take advantage of it until, again, ironic, or maybe historic, that the United States elected Barack Obama, the first African-American president of the United States, in many ways realizing the dream of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, so many more men, women, and children who died and sacrificed in our struggle for liberty and justice. Well, it seems that the election of President Obama has not set well with people in this nation, with many people. In attempting to bring justice to all in many ways, he's received nothing but opposition. The backlash has been tremendous. We've seen an increase in hate groups in this country since this election. The number is almost doubled. There are 1,000 hate groups now, and that doesn't include about 750 nativist groups and so-called patriot militia groups. And the message that they are disseminating on their websites is not much different than what we see from another group who is opposing our new president. People like Glenn Beck who says that Obama hates white people. We see the whole Tea Party movement. And if you scratch them very deep, and I know there are honorable things that people can disagree about, and I don't mean to put down people who criticize our government, but all you have to do is just look and see so much just, I think, blatant, blatant bias and prejudice of these people. But the, the real underlying problem is, and what I want to talk to you tonight about and challenge you, is the fact that America is changing. And America's not going to go back 
and the election of President Obama was the first time that many people, minorities and young people and others, voted for the first time to make this change take place. In 1948, when I was in Mrs. Bear Bell Johnson's class, about 20% of the American population was non-white. 80% were people like myself. Today, that number is approximately 37% non-white. And this last census, numbers that are coming out show that 79% of the increase in America's population between 2000 and 2010 was based on non-whites. And also, if my numbers are correct, the number of white people 20 and below shrunk by 6%. So things are changing, and those who are opposing some of the issues that Dr. King would be fighting for today, like health care, better schools, better education, and other things of that nature, are fighting back hard. You know, when I grew up down in that little small, small cotton farming community in Malmex, Alabama, I didn't understand diversity at all. And I didn't understand how important diversity is to this nation. There were 